should at least stand as you are able, then turn to page 94, the front part of the red hymnal. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. We also acknowledge the Diné and Hopi peoples who are the traditional custodians of the Flagstaff area on which we meet, and we pay respects to the elders past and present of all indigenous peoples of Arizona and the United States. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another, beginning with a moment of silence. <clears throat> Gracious God, have no mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Let us sing our opening hymn, hymn number 979 in the new purple book. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
before this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet, day after day they seek me, and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness, and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments, they delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you do see the naked, to cover them, 
and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then shall you call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So uh, the psalm of the day is Psalm 112. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord, and have great delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright, for the righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in the money and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken, the righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors, their heart is steadfast. Trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and they will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and find a way. The desires of the wicked will perish. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to, do, to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor <coughs> ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, please stand as you are here. <laughs> we will sing that Hallelujah verse down on page. <laughs> <laughs> According to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one puts a light, no one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. 
Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be great, will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you from the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, we heard Jesus, well, I don't know whether to say reorienting or disorienting, or maybe it's both, but his Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the destitute, for the reign of heaven is theirs. Blessed are the meek, those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the peacemaker, the persecuted. In other words, blessed is anyone and everyone who is the opposite of what the ways of the world teach us to be, think, and live. Unlike the Pharisees and scribes who constantly were telling people how to live their lives down to the tiniest minutia, Jesus' words were not prescriptive. Jesus was not telling people what to do in order to have eternal life. Jesus was not teaching people a new method and how to enter heaven. The blessing of eternal life is a gift from God. There is nothing that any one of us can do to receive the reign of heaven except to receive it passively by grace through faith. As such, Jesus' words were descriptive. Jesus was, he was painting a picture of what the reign of God, what holiness and righteousness look like. And it was a stark contrast to what people had previously seen and heard. Jesus was, and still is, busily turning the world right side up. Then, still speaking to the disciples, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. It is you, and not the Pharisees and scribes, who are the salt of the earth. All right, good Jesus, that's good to know, but what exactly does that mean? Salt, you see, had many functions in Jewish life. It seasoned food and preserved it from spoiling. It cleaned and made things kosher. Salt had medicinal and health benefits when used in moderation. And it also had ritual uses. It reminded people of their covenantal relationship with God. In other words, when your life reflects the reign of God that Jesus just described, then you are the salt that brings healing and wholeness, that brings people back into a healthy relationship with God and others. That salt is what helps bring flavor to life. You, to put it another way, you are not the pot roast. You are not the banquet. God is the banquet but you are the salt that helps make life even better, even more flavorful. But if salt loses its saltiness, if impurities like sand get mixed in or with it, then what good is it? I mean, who wants salt in their pot roast? Who wants disciples who lose their integrity by incorporating the old, violent, dehumanizing ways? Nobody, not even God. When salt loses its saltiness, it gets tossed out and trampled for the dirt that it is. But Jesus goes on, you are the light of the world. The Pharisees and the scribes are the blind leading the blind into a ditch. You are the light that brightens a whole house. You are the city light shining on a hill. You're not the house. You are not the mountain. God is the mountain. And you are the light that beckons people to come and seek God out. But if you hide your light, if you hide your practice of the reign of God, what good are you? Who puts a light under a bushel basket so that people stumble around in the darkness? Nobody, not even God. 
So let your light shine so that people can see your good works. See the reign of God at work in tangible ways and say, look, God is with us and for us, making all things new and whole again. Praise God. And there's the rub. Being a disciple is not a hidden private matter. You cannot practice the reign of God and not have people notice. Disrupting the status quo is always going to end up being a public matter. Being persecuted for righteousness sake is always going to be a public matter. Jesus says there may be times to pray in private and to not let the right hand know what the left hand is doing, but that was not to hide your light that was to ensure that the glory goes to God and not to yourself. To put it another way, sometimes Jesus taught the disciples in private because there was no point in throwing pearls before swine. But most of the time, Jesus' ministry was quite public. That was, after all, how Jesus challenged the status quo. That's how Jesus practiced what he preached. Whenever Jesus touched lepers and cast out demons, he demonstrated solidarity with the destitute by restoring them to community. When he praised the widow for giving more than all the wealthy, when she gave her last two pennies in the temple, he was a light pointing to God's reign that was there for the destitute and not the elite rich. When Jesus lamented over Jerusalem, and mourned and wept at Lazarus' death, Jesus' actions were the salt that brought comfort and wholeness to those who mourned in the face of death and oppression. Jesus demonstrated his meekness, his quiet, nonviolent strength and integrity when he faced temptation in the wilderness, when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, acknowledging the weakness of his own flesh, when he loved his enemies, Remember when the police officer struck him at his trial, Jesus did not lash out in violence, an eye for an eye. Instead, he turned the other cheek and sought reconciliation. Jesus hungered and thirsted for righteousness when he ate with sinners and tax collectors, cleansed the temple of its corrupt sacrificial system, and challenged the Pharisees and scribes for their hypocrisy. Jesus shone with the light of God's mercy, when he refused to condemn the woman caught in adultery, and he healed on the Sabbath. Jesus was salt that preserved life when he forgave the sins of the paralytic man, and the woman who wept tears over his feet, and Peter too. Jesus even showed Judas mercy when he gave him that piece of bread at the Last Supper. Jesus demonstrated his catharsis of heart when he was surprised by the faith of the Gentile centurion who had come to Jesus seeking healing for his servant. And Jesus was also surprised by the Gentile Canaanite woman's response to his challenging comment that equated or compared Gentiles to dogs. Jesus was a peacemaker when he stilled the storm and he fed Gentiles and Jews and the Jewish multitudes, nourished them from God's own table, reconciling all people back to God through table fellowship. Of course, Jesus also was a light on the hill when he went to the cross and died on that hill called Golgotha. He was the salt of the earth on that cross when he died for the sake of the destitute, mourning humanity's brokenness, dying meekly, thirsting and hungering for righteousness, mercifully petitioning our Father in heaven to forgive us in purity of heart, making peace between God and humanity, even in the face of violence and persecution, all for the sake of righteousness. And in the light and the salt that is the risen Jesus, he says to his disciples, he says to you, repent, live life from a whole new point of view, for the reign of heaven has come near. Rejoice, for you are the salt of the earth. 
You are the light of the world. Now let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. Jesus. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Inspire our wonder at creation. From the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night, sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know well. Bring healing to the lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels. Put an end to hunger and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way. 
especially Dell, Sue, Rich, Carol, Melinda, Dolly, Nick, Dick, or Richard as I know him, <laughs> Bev, Nancy, Pat, Ruth, Carolyn, M Margie, Margie, Mar Margie, Margie, Minnie, uh, Judy, Norman, Brianna, Molina, Pamela, Missy, Jane, John, Julie, Hayden, Jeannie, Paula, Aurora, Brenda, Elizabeth, David, Alexander, and Margaret Ann. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Shape our congregation <coughs> to be the salt of the earth, salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments, that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast to our trust in you, ready with, intangi with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the pantry, our monthly basket recipient. May those who serve be touched by your grace through our offerings. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For what else do the people of God pray? For the children on the border. The people and the freedom fighters of Ukraine. Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of life. And in particular, we celebrate with those whose birthdays are this coming week, including Dolly's. Lord, bless her and us and all of in our comings and in our goings. Help us to shine forth uh, as light of the world, as you have described us. Help us to live it out daily. And when we have hidden our light under a bushel basket, forgive us, encourage us, and take that basket away so that we might be there to bring you glory. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. The cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for all those unshaken faith, all for all those whose unshaken faith in Jesus shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, and trust in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us greet one another and say <laughs> peace. <laughs> <laughs>
Let us pray. Liberating God, we break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works and personal power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. For you and the Father and the Lord, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our joy and our privilege, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending <coughs> hymn. When he had blessed it and given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to relive me. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had blessed it and given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to relive me. Having been made one in the Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. broken and shed for you. Amen. Amen. And for those of you joining us online, if you are not able to participate in this meal with us, remember that wherever you are, that not only is Jesus with you, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace and your everlasting life. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and to journey humbly with you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn in the purple book, Jesus, the Light of the World, hymn number 914. Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.